Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing big commerce's stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Big commerce is a software platform that provides startups and established companies with everything they need to start and grow their online store. The company is headquartered in Austin, Texas and was founded in 2009. It went public in 2020 and currently trades on the NASDAQ and Deutsche Borsa. It features include customer segmentation, SEO, web hosting, and much more. The company has a very similar business model as Shopify, its main competitor. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid-cap company, 3.9 billion market cap. They're trading at $53 a share and they have 73 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see they have negative free cash flow every year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That's also negative each year as they're growing their business and a lot of money is going towards expenses. Revenue is a sales for the company and that's growing at a pretty nice rate from 92 million up to 152 million. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue and the difference is the gross profit and their gross profit grows each year up to 118 million. Then below that is operating expenses, and their operating expenses are higher than their gross profit, which means they have negative operating income each year. Then you have the interest they pay in their debt. They're up to 3.1 million in interest payments. Last year was 1.6 million. Then other income expenses, and the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which of course is negative each year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow, that's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And they have negative free cash flow each year since they don't have much revenue and they're trying to grow their business. So they need money from somewhere to run their business. They are issuing a little bit of debt. They issued 18.5 million in 2019 and 42 million in 2020. They did pay down 29 million in 2020. But most of their funding is coming from capital stock. They generated 63 million of cash from a capital raise in 2018 and 236 million when they IPO'd last year. Every time a company issues capital stock, that increases the shares outstanding, making your shares less valuable. Let's look at the capital structure. 217 million of equity, 16 million of debt. They're 93% equity, 7% debt. Their net debt is negative 204 million, and their WAC is 13.85%. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated seven years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year seven, that's 11.5 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $5.6 billion. We divide that by 73 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $77. They're trading at $53, so they're trading at a 31% discount. It's a buy according to the model. It is hard to value a company that has negative free cash flow. So I had to look at their financials, and I also looked at Shopify's financials and I modeled their future free cash flows off of that. Eight analysts priced this stock and the average stock price is $71, which is pretty close to where I'm at. The low was 55, the high was 85. This is the stock price since it IPO'd. So at one point it looks like it was over $140. It seems like overall the stock price has not done too well. The stock has gone down 21% in the past 52 weeks while the S&P 500 went up 46%. The 52-week low was $50.59, the high was $163. And the stock is trading below its 50-day and 200-day moving average. When the 200-day moving average crosses above the 50-day moving average, that's called a death cross. That's a bearish signal. About 1 to 2 million shares are traded each day on this stock. 
Of the 73 million shares outstanding, 44 million are on float. 60% are held by institutions and about 10% of the shares on float are shorted. In the past 90 days, this stock has gone down 27%, while its industry went up 6% and the market went up 6%. Although in the past week, this stock has gone up a little bit, while its industry and the market have gone down. Analysts are forecasting their earnings to grow 2%, its industry 18%, and the market 16%. Analysts are forecasting their revenue to grow 19%, their industry 14%, and the market 9%. In the past year, their earnings grew 23%, its industry grew 14%, and the market grew 13%. If you invested $10,000 when this company IPO'd, you'd be at $7,900 today, a 21% loss. The biggest shareholder is General Catalyst at 9%. The next biggest is 7%, then Revolution Growth at 5.7%, Mitchell Hopper, and Matrix Capital. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 33, the median is 22. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so we can't look at the PE. Their price to sales ratio is 25.3. That means investors are paying $25 for $1 revenue. That's much worse than the median and average. Their price to book is 17.8, which is also worse than the median and average. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative return on invested capital. Also negative interest coverage ratio, negative ROE. Their current ratio is 5.5. They have a lot of current assets on their balance sheet. Their current assets are 219 million of cash and 23 million of receivables. So the company does seem to be well capitalized. They did have negative 28 million of free cash flow, but they have over $200 million of working capital. So they have $180 million of funding. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 27 companies in the same industry as Big Commerce. And if Big Commerce has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So Big Commerce has negative earnings similar to Shopify, so we can't look at the PE ratio. Their price to sales ratio is pretty close to average, while Shopify is much worse than them. They're below average in price to book, a lot better than Shopify. Both Big Commerce and Shopify have really high current ratios. Both companies have negative earnings, so they have negative ROE. Both companies are pretty low in debt. And Big Commerce is a pretty small company, 3.9 billion market cap. Shopify is a massive company, 147 billion. And most companies in this industry do not pay a dividend. A lot of these companies do not make any money, so they can't pay a dividend. And the companies that do make money, they just put it back into the company to grow it. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 31% discount. A lot of people are trying to make their own online stores to make money. Plus there's a lot of companies, some really big companies, that want to start selling online or make their online stores better. Big Commerce is a place they can all go, so they do provide an important service. As long as they can compete with Shopify, both of these companies should do really well. So I think it's a great long-term hold. I rank their free cash flows 1 out of 10, their revenue 6 out of 10, and their ratios 2 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.